Cougars are about to host the Duchesne Eagles in a basin matchup. Uh, can we call it a, a, a basin? You know, we call it a basin ball game between you, you and a high and uh, uh, union. Uh, what, what would we call this? Uh, let's call it the, the I don't know, <laughs> it's, man. It's, it's, it's a, a rivalry game. It's a grudge match. It's a grudge match. I like it. <laughs> right now with the uh, Cougars hosting the Eagles. Uh, last year, the uh, Eagles beat the Cougars on their home floor. And so both teams, one looking to repeat that and one looking to get, get even on the scoreboard in the last couple of years. And uh, tonight's action, we're going to see a lot of press from both teams. Uh, both of them run kind of a 1-3-1 trap press on the corners. And you've watched both of these programs play this year. Yeah. The Duchesne, they run more. You know, they, they'll start out really hot off their press. I mean, they'll do it off the pr first possession. Um, I don't know if they'll do that tonight, but they get going quick on that press. And defensively, wow, they, they hold teams just down to almost nothing. I mean, when I was at that Tabiona game a couple weeks ago, I mean, it's 31-37 for a game. And for a high school game to be in that low of numbers, I mean, there's some defense being played. So I think Duchesne's going to be battling on the defensive side here. Yeah, and Duchesne, uh, as many 1A schools as you might be able to personally attest, Brandon, they bring a lot of their football players into this basketball program. And uh, we don't want to call it a thug life. But they, they know how to make contact, and they know how to take contact. So uh, the physicality of the Eagles uh, certainly going to be a factor here tonight. For sure they will. Uh, toughness is what, what, what football players have, and uh, you, you, you'll see that. And, and Duchesne, also with execution. I mean, in football, you have to execute perfect, and they're not you know, a great football team for not executing, and they do the same thing on the basketball court. Execution is number one. Sure, and we had a chance to talk to uh, Coach Billy Hoops before uh, tonight's game, you know, and he gave us three keys to the game, but uh, more importantly was you could see it in his eyes that it's working this year. Uh, he, he was kind of glowing about that. You know, they've had some, you know, eight and three coming in tonight's game, and he's already looking towards the playoffs right now, and he's thinking they could have a deep run. But let's take a look at his uh, keys to the game. Number one, rebounding. Uh, big surprise there. This is just what I call coach speak, you know. I mean, if, if you win the rebound battle, most of those games you win. Uh, two, we go to the turnovers. And, uh, you know, he just says turnovers is a blank word. I would say create turnovers and limit turnovers is probably what he meant. And then uh, the, what you talked about earlier, uh, offense off defense, he wants to get a lot of transition points. Yeah, this defense does a good job of not, they, they do a good job of taking the ball away, but then on offense, they don't turn the ball over. They, they, they'll pass it around until they have a great shot, and they don't make a lot of mistakes. And if they do, then co the coach, he'll call timeout and make sure they, they have, a, have the right thing going. Yeah, and then you go over on the other side of the ball, Coach Gordon Garrett in his second year, the first year as a rookie head coach, took the Cougars to a region title, and then he lost 12 seniors. <laughs> You know, and, and he's starting four seniors tonight, so it's not as though he doesn't have mature bodies, but when you lose 12 seniors, you lose basically your whole varsity team. Yeah, for sure. Right now they're just really unexperienced. I mean, the only one that has significant time on, on varsity is, is Jeremillo from last year, and he has he's having an outstanding year already. Uh, just give him some time. I mean, we're barely in conference, so, I mean, they're one-on-one -on -one in conference, so they're not out of it yet. And uh, they're just continuing to grow every single game. So I, I like what I see. Yeah, from, the from ever uh, important region play in, uh, <laughs> in high school sports. And one and one, so anyone has a chance once you get to region. You know, and talking to Coach uh, Garrett, uh, one of his keys to the game, and this is the first time I've seen this all year, communicate. Uh, and then two, he wants to take the great shots. And three, he wants to value the ball, you know, not create those uh, limited, uh, those turnovers, unnecessary turnovers. Uh, so, so kind of interesting. We have a late start tonight. I want to thank everyone that's joining us from both hometowns for VTV6 here with both Duchesne and uh, uh, Roosevelt being our hometown. We're going to take a short break here at VTV6. We'll be back uh, for the starting lineups of tonight's game.
On the current episode of Wild Air, Blake Finn takes us along on its archery deer hunt. Then we follow the DWR as they release some turkeys in the book cliffs. All of this on the latest episode of Wild Air. Dr. Carl Breitenbach, Dr. Rod Anderson, Dr. John Griffith, Dr. Daniel Kwok, and Dr. Ethan Pettit. All part of the great team for obstetric and newborn care at Ashley Regional Medical Center. Our obstetric team has over 80 years of combined experience in delivering your baby and working closely with a highly trained team of obstetrical nurses. Our pediatrics team can treat newborns at 34 weeks and older in our Level 2 NICU, providing you with the opportunity to stay close to home with your friends and family to support you. Our new women's center opening in 2018 will provide the latest in amenities for your comfort and quality of care. Worried about costs? Our new Storks program can provide you with the help you may need. You can ask any of our providers for more information. You can trust the care at Ashley Regional for you and your newborn. Ashley Regional, making communities healthier. It's not about the miles you take when you're driving, but the milestones you see when you get to where you're going. When you graduate high school, buy your first car, Get married, start a family, find your first home, and grow old together. Let each mile bring you closer to the moments that matter. l l Motor. People you know. People who care. service to its customers for over 75 years. With a state-of-the-art electrical system, we are setting a standard for excellence in the electric utility industry. We are proud to call this place home, and we are happy to support our local schools and athletes. Find and like us on Facebook for energy-saving tips. Moon Lake Electric, keeping the power on. Founded in 1946 by the Savage family with a single truck, today, Savage is the leader in supply chain management solutions that are tailored to meet the needs of our customers across a variety of industries. We are a proud sponsor of high school sports coverage and the community here in the Uinta Basin. On the current episode of Wild Air, Blake Finn takes us along on its archery deer hunt. Then we follow the DWR as they release some turkeys in the book cliffs. All of this on the latest episode of Wild Air. Dr. Carl Breitenbach, Dr. Rod Anderson, Dr. John Griffith, Dr. Daniel Kwok, and Dr. Ethan Pettit. 
All part of the great team for obstetric and newborn care at Ashley Regional Medical Center. Our obstetric team has over 80 years of combined experience in delivering your baby and working closely with a highly trained team of obstetrical nurses. Our pediatrics team can treat newborns at 34 weeks and older in our Level 2 NICU, providing you with the opportunity to stay close to home with your friends and family to support you. Our new women's center opening in 2018 will provide the latest in amenities for your comfort and quality of care. Worried about costs? Our new Storks program can provide you with the help you may need. You can ask any of our providers for more information. You can trust the care at Ashley Regional for you and your newborn. Ashley Regional, making communities healthier. We're back here live at uh, Union High School where the Cougars are about to host the Eagles in uh, Basin Grudge, Grudge match. match. Yeah, let's let's get that right. And as they uh, announced the starting lineup for the uh, Duchesne Eagles, it was Clay Giles, number one, Chad Lewis, number 11, watch out for him, Cade Lamborn, number 31, Jarrett Spencer, number 24, and Kaysen Giles, number 32. And of course, the home team has the honor of uh, turning up the music and getting loud. So you know, home team, in this case, Union Cougars have uh, number 22, Tyler Swain starting. Uh, number three, Brevin Nielsen. Number 23, Chase Birchall. Number five, Trevor Birchall. And number 30, Austin Jaramillo. And when you talk about um, what each each uh, each player does for the team, Jaramillo in the UNA game that I watched handled everything for the Cougars. He yeah, he, he's really your floor general, and he uh, he gets it done. But also, he can score too. Um, last year, he I mean, he was just in there to pass, and this year they've really got him scoring. So I like that matchup. Yeah, and each coach uh, union coached by Gordon Garrett and Duchesne coached by Billy Hoops. And here comes the butterflies, Brandon. You know, <laughs> as a former athlete yourself, all about the butterflies. Yeah, this is the part where I'm like sick. And you're like, oh. And then it, and then it goes away about in the first 30 seconds. <laughs> Lewis tips to Giles, and Giles sets up the Eagles offense early. Looking to swing back, and you see the Eagles have settled into a 2-3 zone and uh, lots of trap and pressure on the corners when the ball gets that direction. And yep. that ball is whipping around for the Eagles early, and that creates an open shot, shot by Lewis, off the mark, chased down, and then, well, that is an individual effort. And I didn't see who it was. I believe it was number 31, Cade Lamborn. And you'll see on the LNL motor replay, potentially, and it's just the shot goes up. Nope, we go back into the action. Missed the replay, but uh, that's Lamborn just creating a second opportunity for the Eagles. They didn't probably deserve without his effort. Ball turned over, picked up by uh, number 30, Jaramillo, and the Cougars quickly down into their offense. Inside to Birchall. Birchall high off the glass, can't get it to go. Rebound goes to Lamborn, and coming back the other way is the Eagles. Yeah, you know, I like this matchup between, you know, Chad Lewis and Brevin Nielsen on the other side. I love threes, and these guys can definitely put it up. I mean, both of them have 25 threes on the year, so let's see if they can get into a matchup and see who wins that war tonight. Into the middle was Lamborn, and did you see the play earlier by Clay Giles? Lost his feet, but had the presence of mind to bounce the ball so he didn't, didn't have a travel. That was a big-time play by Lamborn there. So Jaramello probing the defense, trying to find a hole. He swings it back out. And with the uh, cutting action of the Cougars, and they're going to get a foul and a reach in, I think that'll go against number one, Clay Giles. And you can already see the defense of Duchesne. It's just so hard to get it inside. And that's what that's what Union wants to do, is to get it inside and penetrate that defense. And it's, it's pretty hard to do. And I'm, I'm interested to see what they can do to combat that. Calling out the play, they get it in to Birchall. Birchall swings. Jaramillo on the baseline, cut. Jaramillo backing in, nothing given. 
works his way to a shot, and he hits the underside of the rim, but rolls it in somehow. Yeah, that was a good first step right there. He almost got the hook, but he just took it in and laid it up. Man, what a great play. Turnover created by Birchill. Gets it to Jaramello, coming back the other way. There's your nails guy there, Tyler Swain, number 22. Got the tip on that pass to get the Cougars back the ball. Looking for a hole. There's a nice backdoor cut by Nielsen. Nielsen misses the bunny, and then Nielsen gets fouled. I think they're going to have to give it to uh, number 32, Kaysen Giles, but, and that's exactly what they do because on the front side of that, Cade Lamborn had a clean block. Yeah, he did, and, and you like to see that early. I mean, that's an aggressive foul, but, I mean, you want to see two guys go up there and get the swat like that. That is cool. Brevin Nielsen, the senior, short on the first has a second opportunity. And so often in prep play, you come out and there's the slow start. Two and a half minutes gone and only two points on the board. And I expect to see that increase at some point. Rebound by Kaysen Giles. Yeah, what I've seen with Union, and they like to, you know, they like to get a team to run. And Duchesne, they just are a half court offense and they, they want to be slow. They want to slow the ball down. And Union wants to speed it up and get into transition just like that. Nielsen oh, good. sets up for a three that is picked up by Clay Giles. Giles into the paint. Giles bounce pass, and he gets it to Lamborn. Lamborn up and in. How Lamborn has big, been big on this game. He just got the block, got the shot on that end, had the presence in mind to get the ball when it was going out of bounds. Great game for Lamborn so far. Shot up. And then no good, and they've got a flat foul on the floor. I think it was Chase Birchill that, no, and I can't see who they've gave that foul to yet. It goes to number 22, Tyler Swain. Tyler Swain. And that's just on the miss, and he goes over the back. And it's good body position by Case and Giles. So the Eagles back across half court, and just facing Oh, nice entry pass, and then just a Shankle, Shankleopolis right there. Missed the easy 10-footer. Case and Giles, usually pretty good at that shot right there. They'll go back to him. Yeah, get those early game jitters out and uh, just settle down and start making those easy shots. There's Jaramillo for three, just short. No, and he bounces that one in. That's the shooter's roll for sure. That's five points now for Jaramillo. Like I said, he's not just your point guard, but he's a scoring point guard this year. So look Jath for him to get more shots in too. Jath Mansfield with the rebound and the Cougars come back the other way. Inside to Jath, he swings inside outside game going early. And there's a shuffle of the feet and there's no question about it. Birchill just halfway between shooting and dribbling. <laughs> Took a few shuffle steps there, yeah, for sure. That would have been a good good play in the NBA. But down here where we play real basketball, it's a travel. Duchesne on this possession are probably gonna get Chad Lewis involved. There's a shot up by number 24, Jarrett Spencer. And uh, that's a good look. He just missed it and coming back the other way. And the Cougars patiently setting up their offense and Jaramillo calling out where he wants his players on the floor. Gets it into Mansfield, Mansfield with a nice turn. Gets it high off the glass, can't get it to go. Rebound, Cade Lamborn. Wait, and you see there, Clay Giles just kind of getting bounced around. He's the smallest guy on the court, <laughs> but he's fearless. Right here on the l, &L Motor Replay, it's a crossover and he gets in there and he just bounce, bounce, and they call the second one. So Polson in now for the Eagles. Yeah, Clay Giles, kind of the opposite of Jaramillo. Uh, he likes to pass the ball, doesn't get a ton of shots. He does have quite a few points this year, but looks more to pass first. Jaramillo there creates the contact. He looked around saying, where's the call? I think it's a good no call. Then there's a three. Oh, in and out. And Mansfield just uses his strength to clear out and get that rebound. Good open shot there by Duchesne, just barely missed. 
They're trying to get Giles a little bit more into the three. He's only got one this year so far, but I know he can stroke it. And there's gonna be a over the back by Jath Mansfield. I had the uh, pleasure of coaching that young man for several seasons in the younger, younger years. And uh, there was a few fouls like that in our day. <laughs> Climbing over the back. There's a 30 second timeout on the floor. We'll keep it here with a VTV6. LNL Motor wants to remind you that it's the love of the game, the players, the competition, and the diehard fans that matter most. Let each mile you drive in your LNL vehicle take you to the moments that matter most in your life. Yeah, I really like uh, Union if they, they use Jath Mansfield down there. He's, he doesn't really match up well with anyone on Duchesne because they're all shorter than him. If they can just get him established and put it in in the paint real easy, he can get get buckets all night long. So look, look for them to establish him for sure. So the Cougars come out in a full court press. One, one, two, one look, and that's just get the ball in the corners and trap it out, look for the long passes. So they'll patiently wait for him to get to the corners, and there comes the trap. And there's the toe near turnover, but a good save by Weston Polson, and then the uh, Cougars continue to press, and they get the foul. I believe that'll go against uh, number 31, uh, Ty Gilman. Now, Ty Gilman had an interesting uh, career arc. He started, or he played a varsity minutes as a freshman, and then last year dropped off the uh, face of the planet, it seemed like. <laughs> Didn't get onto the court hardly at all, and now he's back into getting uh, varsity minutes as a junior, so. I think it's just, you know, they need to get him experience, and plus he got a little bit taller too, so he's probably working with uh, um, how the coordination and things, and so they're probably working with him and getting his shots and running down the court and making sure that, you know, he's ready to go for varsity this year, because I think that they really wanted to get him involved. Sure, and that young man can scratch his sin standing up straight. He's got a, <laughs> he's an incredible wingspan, so. And then there's Chad Lewis on his first two points of the night. Look yeah. for them to go to him, he's, he's a very good player. He's getting it done at the charity stripe. Wow, and that's just hustle defense by Weston Polson. And the Cougars have gotta be thinking easy too, but you see here on the LNL Motor Replay, Polson just turns on the Jets reaches in and knocks the ball away from Chase Burchill. Cougars maintain possession and get back into their offense. Pick and roll with Jaramillo, out to Gilman. Yeah, those hustle plays, they just make your team better. And Weston Polson going for that ball right there, it's just gonna make his teammates wanna, wanna build up and do something good as well. So, great play on his end. Jeremelo continues to probe. There's a nice drive block from behind. And uh, I'll tell you right now, Chad Lewis has reason to <laughs> complain. If we get to see that on the LNL motor, it looks like he had it clean in live action. There's the drive, gets passed and through, and Lewis reaches up. Nope, he did get the arm. I'm occasionally wrong, it happens once a year. There's my <laughs> one and only. He did really good. He kept his hands up there all the way to the very end, and then he kind of swatted at the ball and got the back of the arm. So. <coughs> Burchill makes the first and then the substitutions come on the court. And then another substitution, usually they don't let that happen after a make unless it's for the shooter, but. So, back into the press they go. Lewis gets it back to Giles, and then Giles sets up the offense. Giles in the paint, swings it outside. And I haven't seen that press very much from Union this year, so it's a good adjustment. Uh, it just shows that the coach are watching film because that Tabiona game, that was what was making Duchesne struggle at times, was that full crep 4-1-3-1 one, one press. So. How observant of the coaches is that? Well, they did mention that uh, they like to see the VTV broadcast because it did help them 
and they specifically mentioned the Taviona Duchesne game coming into the night's action. Gilman picks up the loose ball, goes up and earns the foul. He'll take himself to the charity stripe. Good hard first step, got the foul, almost got the and one there. Uh, Ty Gilman. Both teams been strong from the free throw line to this point. And <laughs> I guess you would call that strength. He pinned that ball in there. How many times have you seen a pin ball on a free throw like that? I can't think of a time in the last three years. <laughs> I'm talking about college, NBA, or anything. Well, that's, we got that's pretty uh, incredible. Got one of the uh, UNA players come over to watch that. Maybe we'll try to get him in on a halftime interview. Uh, Corbin Gardner just tapped me on the shoulder, said oh, hi. Sorry. When you love basketball, you love basketball. So coming back after the turnover, Cougars. Get it to Jarmelo. Jarmelo does what he does. Oh, nice entry pass there. And then an equally nice swat coming from Chad Lewis. You know, you, you find an opening deep in the post like that with Trevin Burchill, and you think there's been a couple of times when the Cougars get there, and Jarmelo, he gets the step back three. Wow, that was an off balance with a guy in your face. That's a high degree of difficulty shot. Yeah, that's eight points now for Jaramillo. Uh, three goes down, that's his second three of the night. Chad Lewis with the shot oh. and a three to answer. Oh my, I told you that guy could shoot. Wow, how Almost. about that? And that's how you end a, uh, a, slow, a low scoring action pack first quarter here on VTV6 where the Cougars Lead the Eagles 10 to 7. We'll be right back. It's not about the miles you take when you're driving, but the milestones you see when you get to where you're going. When you graduate high school, buy your first car, get married, start a family, find your first home, and grow old together. Let each mile bring you closer to the moments that matter. L&L Motor, people you know, people who care. Welcome back to VTV, Channel 6, Mark Mason and Brandon Jones here on the call. And uh, you know, you have a first quarter where the score is 10-7 and you think you might be at a girls game. But, uh, but, but at 10-7, that was a lot of action between the two teams. And there's gonna be an over or back call, an early turnover, and they missed the uh, carry because he pinned the ball on his, on his shin and then, anyway, so. Now I'm telling you, this Duchesne team, the defense that they bring, it, it makes it hard for other teams to score. It takes everything um, out of the other team to guard them, and then it also takes them out of it just trying to get away to get an open shot. So it's going to be a low-scoring game, I think, um, as far as, as high school basketball goes. And uh, on that other end, in the first quarter, Clay Giles, you know, not, not only is he the floor general, he's a good defensive player as well. Um, oh. Boy, that's cat caught napping right there on the inbounds. <laughs> and what you never want to do is give the big fella up an easy catch and shoot like they just gave to Chad Lewis. And on the other end, the big time three from Brevin Nielsen. You know, and that suffocating defense from the Eagles is going to open up those outside shots. So coming back the other way, three short was uh, Chad Lewis and the Eagles still scrapping for the ball and finally the Cougars come up with it. And I thought that would be the matchup with Brevin Nielsen right there and Chad Lewis. And uh, right now they're one to one for three pointers of the night. And I really, I like shooting threes and so I'm gonna keep up with that stat. Three from the corner. There's another one. Knocks it down, Brevin Nielsen the senior doing work from the perimeter and now the Cougars have opened up a seven point lead, their biggest of the night. 
Well, nobody's guard you. I guess you just shoot it, but sometimes that takes you out of the rhythm. And, and certainly in that case for Giles, it happened that way. Yeah, Clay Giles has been struggling from the three-point line all year. I know he can shoot it, uh, but you, you saw it in the Tabiona game. They kind of backed Ooh. off. And How about five feet off the line for Chad Lewis? There's and another there. three. That's two, two. Brevin Nielsen, two. Chad Lewis, two for threes. It's raining threes here in the second quarter. Jerry Miller wanted to be in the game, too, so he's got two as well. Oh, and they're going to call a push off there. I think it was a pretty good call. He had his arm all the way extended out. Strata Networks is proud to be your local wireless provider. Right now, get a 4G smartphone for zero down and upgrade in as early as one year with Strata Plus. Learn more at stratanetworks.com. So it's a three party here tonight so far. And Giles skipped pass all the way across the court and then it's a turnover and here come the Cougars. Jarmelo, oh he gets it stripped, gets his own back and then Giles strips it away and it is mayhem on the court, bodies hitting everywhere. What a good play there by Jared Spencer getting the block, almost an open layup there for Jarmelo but he just gets in the way, puts his hand in the way. There's that Duchesne defense. And they give the foul to, I believe, Ty Gilman. Indeed, that's who, it get, who gets it. That's his second foul. There are eight fouls for the Cougars, only four for the Eagles. And so with 535 left in the second, the Eagles shoot free throws for the rest of the half. Yeah, Cade Lamborn on the year. I mean, he's a he's an outstanding rebound uh, guy too. That he has like 66 on the year already. Um, just a, he works hard out there. I mean, he sometimes he's a good scorer as well, but usually he's just in every play, blocking shots, doing everything he can for his team. So Lamborn makes the free throw, and then a rare lane violation called, and so wipes off the points, and then. Here come the Cougars, and wow, that's how you break a press right there. And recipient of a great pass is Tyler Swain up off the glass. So that lane violation, that's a three-point swing when you figure you lose the point, and they make a quick, quick two. Uh, that's a yeah, that's a good, good shot there by Chase Birchall, and then he also made a defensive player on here on this end. Just taps it out. Lewis with the two. Little step Doesn't back. Quite go. That's the old Dirk Nowitzki step back off one leg, and he shot it past everything. Entry pass to Mansfield. Boy, Jaramillo wants that three. There it is. I kind of agree with you. Right now, there's a massive size mismatch with Jeff Mansfield down there. He was being guarded by number two, Weston Polson, who's generously listed at five foot eleven. And Mansfield didn't even get a whiff of that ball. Uh, they did put it into him, and then he didn't take it up. He threw it right back out to Jaramillo. But, yeah, I, I agree. They need to go into him. I think that's the, a big key right now that they're going to gonna go to. Lamborn with the shot. Mm. He makes it. That's two shots, two points for Lamborn. He's got six on the evening, and so coming back, and then Mansfield gets it, swings it outside. Three-pointer off the mark. Giles with the rebound. He comes quickly into, ooh. oh, and he gets it. I'm not sure how he gets that to go. He was being ridden like a pony. Yeah, I don't know how that wasn't an and one call as well. That's just crazy. Back to Mansfield. I mean, I think he just needs to get a little deeper in the post. He's too far out. He needs to back in. There you go. Then he needs to call for the ball. He needs to demand the ball down there. Cougars going for it, Mansfield. And there was a Duchesne cheerleader that was fearing for her life. She left the building. <laughs> Good hustle player there by Mansfield, trying to get to the ball, just, just a little late. Lewis. Lamborn to Giles. Lewis with the three. That one misses the mark. 
and they are content to shoot long here, and that's good or bad. Right now, it's the bad, so Mansfield gets it. Nice pump fake, and he realized what he had on his back shoulder there with Chad Lewis coming in for the swap block. Beautiful fake there. He just faked it, let the guy go over him, and had an easy two shot. I think on that one that uh, Chad Lewis might have sold that foul call. He did the classic whip head back. <laughs> Sometimes that's what you got to do to get the call. So a plethora of substitutions coming onto the court. Tyler Swain coming in again. Another do everything guy. I mean, really good football player for Union as well. He makes the first. Ashley Regional Medical Center, making communities healthier, healthier. Need a family physician? Visit our website at ashleyregional.com for a list of all of our physicians. So Lewis makes both. And Lewis has eight leads. Uh, Duchesne in scoring with eight points. Jaramillo has eight. Oh, and just that's in and out by wow. Chase Birchall. Lewis with another three, almost goes. And Maybe a little bit of a hurried shot there. I, I think he could have passed it around a little bit before he got that shot. Well, just what we kind of expected early, they had the slowest, slow start to the game. And the scoring has definitely picked up a, a, a touch here. But the defense continues to be strong. And there's just good court awareness from Jarmella, knowing where he's at on the court to save the ball and where his teammates are to get them the ball once he catches it. Yeah, and the rotations of Duchesne, they're just so hard to penetrate against. I mean, they do such a good job. Even when you screen, they still know exactly where to go with their guy. There's a foul there, and he's gonna get three shots. Indeed, and that's Jarrett Spencer, five foot nine, and he just kind of leans into that, and you'll watch here, here's the pass out on the LNL motor replay. He shoots it, takes the contact, and makes sure he goes down to convince the referee that he was fouled. Certainly contact on his arms after the shot had gone up. Earns himself three, and wow! Round and round he goes, and he gets that one to drop. Uh, Jar Jarrett Spencer can also fill it up. He has 13 threes on the year. So he's not gonna be afraid to take that three every time. Misses the second of three free throws. Three-point lead for the Cougars has been as high as seven. And he makes the second, so down to a one-possession game. And so subbing back in for Jarrett Spencer is Clay Giles. A little short break there and good rotations from Hoops giving his guys minutes, but. So it looks like Duchesne's given a little bit of their own medicine. Doing that full court trap back to oh. Lewis. Lewis almost gets the ball, just loses it. Jeremello on the other end, goes up, gets fouled. I think it's before the shot. Gonna call that on the ground. And if we watch on the LNL motor replay, Jeremello just creates the contact. He sees it, he initiates the contact with his shoulder, and then gets the shot up, but they do call that on the ground. Veteran savvy, just knowing how you initiate the contact helps you control the shot afterwards. And on the other end, the Eagles may be too unselfish. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think there that maybe Giles should have just shot it and he gives it up to Lewis. And then we have a big block here. Well, I don't know if we're gonna see that on the l l motor replay or not, but uh, going up strong and then being rejected by Case and Giles, but uh, winning that battle is Birchall who makes the first. Yeah, sometimes when you miss a couple shots like Clay uh, Giles has. Oh, there it is. Ooh. That is a, well, I'm not sure who they gave that to. <laughs> if they if, if they gave it on the block, then it's a missed call. If it's on the body on the other defender, then it's the right call. So, <laughs> I say with Clay Giles, if I mean, if you missed a couple shots and so you're kind of hesitant to take a shot, so you want to pass the ball, but there's a foul there by Lewis. And Lewis is upset with himself. He knows that he shouldn't have done that. 
and uh, he picks up his third foul, so he's going to take a seat, and that's big. That's a really big foul. Moon Lake Electric's been in operation since 1938. Owned by the people they serve, Moon Lake is a cooperative, not privately owned. And to add the insult to injury, Jeremello makes the free throw, so not only does Lewis go to the bench, but on the one-on-one, -on -one, Jeremello makes him pay with both made. Yeah, that's a huge foul. I mean, you're probably not gonna see him now until about the second half. They might bring him in. And, but the other thing is, is he's such a good defensive player, he's gonna have to not be as, as aggressive. So immediately coming back the other way, Birchill, and he gets it stripped. And then Birchill on the ground, they're gonna call him out of bounds as a turnover. Yeah, he slid right out of bound right there. But hey, good, good hustle play there by Birchill. So we'll see who looks to, to step it up here while uh, Chad Lewis is out. And this is the second time that there's been a miscommunication between Spencer and Giles and turnover and the Cougars trying to take advantage of the second one. Three, it's off the mark, rebound. And the Cougars maintain possession with the Swain rebound. And then Nielsen makes him pay. That was, uh, that was Caleb Bolton actually. Number two for the first three. So we're still 3-3 three, three with uh, Chad Lewis and Brevin Nielsen. <laughs> and There's then, Caleb Bolton again, five points in like 30 seconds. Yeah, and what was a 22-20 game with the foul to Lewis, and they've opened up a 11-point lead, and right now the Cougars rolling. Nothing going down for the Eagles. 24 seconds left in the half, and the Cougars gonna play for the last shot. Coming up to put a little pressure defense is Giles. And uh, so they're gonna make the move here, 10 seconds left. Who's gonna take the final shot? Jarmella. Oh, good pass. Oh, good oh. block by Jared Spencer right there. Yeah, and 2.8 sec seconds left. The Cougars plenty of time to get that shot off. And you think Bolton's going to go on a run of seven straight points, but blocked out. Jaramillo with a nice step back. It's, and it's good. good. Oh, my. Wow. <laughs> and he's going to get mobbed by his team on the way to the half court. And the Eagles find themselves in a big hole here on the Cougars' home court where the Cougars lead 34-20, it's halftime. Stick with us, we'll have a little bit of halftime entertainment. We'll be right back here on VTV6. service to its customers for over 75 years. With a state-of-the-art electrical system, we are setting a standard for excellence in the electric utility industry. We are proud to call this place home, and we are happy to support our local schools and athletes. Find and like us on Facebook for energy-saving tips. Moon Lake Electric, keeping the power on. Welcome back to VTV Channel 6, where we saw an action-packed first half and the uh, Cougars in a dogfight until this foul to Chad Lewis. Once that happened, the barn doors blew open. Yeah, it's crazy how that happened. And I mean, then they just shot three after three and got up big. Um, but look for Duchesne in that second half. I think the second half, they're gonna get back to grounding and being that defense that they can be, so. 
Yeah, it's one of the hard things when you're a prep player with three fouls is you second guess yourself on defense. So Chad Lewis, even though he'll get back into the game, is going to be tentative at best on that end of the court. And out in front of us, you see the uh, Union Cougarettes on their uh, character drill routine. Always fun to watch the drill teams perform at halftime. But let's take a look now at the LNL Motor replay highlights of the first half. We'll go right into those, and would you believe it's a three party? <laughs> and right off the bat, Jeremello straight away bounces it around, gets it up, and he holds up the three to make sure you let know. And then he hits a corner three, and Chad Lewis says, Hey, I'm going to get me some of my own. And then the inbounds pass to Lamborn up and in off the glass. And then the uh, Cougars doing what they do with more threes from the corner. Chad Lewis's three, and then Lamborn with the 15 footer. Nothing but net. And taking it hard to the rack was Clay Giles. And that's a tough angle. And there you got your buzzer beater step back three. And holding the crane up and slapping the forehead with three. Jaramello. And uh, that's, uh, that's how you find yourself with a 34-20 halftime score. And the uh, Cougars close out the first half with a 12-0 run. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back here with more halftime entertainment. Stick with us. Founded in 1946 by the Savage family with a single truck, today Savage is the leader in supply chain management solutions that are tailored to meet the needs of our customers across a variety of industries. We are a proud sponsor of high school sports coverage and the community here in the Uinta Basin. On the current episode of Wild Air, Blake Finn takes us along on its archery deer hunt. Then we follow the DWR as they release some turkeys in the book cliffs. All of this on the latest episode of Wild Air. Dr. Carl Breitenbach, Dr. Rod Anderson, Dr. John Griffith, Dr. Daniel Kwok, and Dr. Ethan Pettit. All part of the great team for obstetric and newborn care at Ashley Regional Medical Center. Our obstetric team has over 80 years of combined experience in delivering your baby and working closely with a highly trained team of obstetrical nurses. Our pediatrics team can treat newborns at 34 weeks and older in our Level 2 NICU, providing you with the opportunity to stay close to home with your friends and family to support you. Our new women's center opening in 2018 will provide the latest in amenities for your comfort and quality of care. Worried about costs? Our new Storks program can provide you with the help you may need. You can ask any of our providers for more information. You can trust the care at Ashley Regional for you and your newborn. Ashley Regional, making communities healthier. Welcome back to VTV Channel 6. We're here at Union High School, but uh, lo and behold, we've got from Uinta High School fame, Corbin Gardner coming over, and Corbin, uh, big win last night, uh, makes you two and two in region. Yes, it does. Yeah, w and uh, I want to get your take. I was there at the Maple Mountain game. Uh, you know, right there at the end of the game, you've got that uh, five seconds, then it turns into seven seconds. What's going through your mind as a player as that, as that, all that's going on, going on? There was just so much confusion. Um, definitely, I would say definitely the wrong call for sure, but. You know, you just had to play through it, and I felt like we could have played through it anyways, but we kind of didn't play through it. So, you know, there was a lot to blame on the referees, but we could have finished it off instead anyways. But Yeah, you know, and that's a good positive outlook. And while I was there, I counted five missed free throws in the last three minutes, you know. Yep. And so, and then that reach-in foul, that's something maybe you could have gone without. Yep. But I like the way that UN responded, comes back home, and you guys have two, where well, you had the one road win against Spanish Fork right. and then the, the big win against Payson last night. Um, you know, I got a question for you. When your buddy goes off in the first quarter like John Parker did last right. night, you just buckle up and enjoy the ride, or, 
What, what's going through your mind is he's hitting ridiculous heat check right. shots with the guys in his hip pocket. Right. Well, when John was on fire like he was last night, you just got to make, make things happen for him. I mean, we did a good job about keeping him going. Like, he was on fire, but also we sent him a lot of picks. And, he, do, he well, he was so high, he could have done a lot of things himself. But we, just, we as teammates looked for him, so he kept it going as well. So Yeah, and while he's doing his thing, the one thing I noticed about what you did, which opened it up, I believe, for him, is you attacked the rim, and you had nine points also in that first quarter. Right. But you got seven of those at the free throw line. Right. You know, and I believe that he has the hot night from the perimeter, but the reason he does is because you've drove to the line and collapsed the defense. Yeah. So, you know. I can see that. Yeah, so good good team win there. You're watching tonight's game, and, of course, uh, the, the fans watching at home right now, they're interested in both the Cougars and the Eagles. Uh, what's your takes on the first half, and what adjustments would you make if you were coaching both of these schools? Well, there was a lot of three-point shooting, I'd say. Um, a lot of good ball movement. I'd say Duchesne had a lot of unnecessary turnovers that they could have been fixed, but um, both teams are playing pretty well and shooting well from the field, so i just say keep it going and attack the weaknesses. Yeah, and you've been involved in so many basketball games where foul trouble is the key. Chad Lewis, number 11, gets his third foul. He goes out. At the time he goes out, it's a two-point ball game. Right. He goes out, and they go on a 12 nothing run. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think silly fouls, and you, you know as a player, mm -hmm. when you take yourself out of the game, sometimes it, it's a detriment not only to yourself but your yeah. team. So, well, okay, Corbin, thanks so much for joining us. We'll have to have you down at the Sports Bin uh, soon. Right. Uh, I'm excited. You know, we've had, uh, we've had you on a, a couple of times as a uh, – uh, monster replay uh, right. candidate, and you right. actually won a couple, but uh, appreciate you joining us here at halftime. We're going to take a break here on VTV6. We'll be back for the start of the third quarter. It's not about the miles you take when you're driving, but the milestones you see when you get to where you're going. When you graduate high school, Buy your first car, get married, start a family, find your first home, and grow old together. Let each mile bring you closer to the moments that matter. l l Motor. People you know. People who care. back here on VTV6 and we're just about to start the third quarter and you know lo and behold the flag came down so <laughs> so everyone's staring at the flag and uh, nobody's really quite sure what to do with it but uh, so who knows while we're waiting for that we had a great halftime entertainment I want to remind you not to forget to check out the sports spin on VTV6 Thursdays at 6:30. Myself and John Nurden bring you weekly highlights and analysis from all of your Basin teams. Like at the Sports Spin on Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you be able to vote for your favorite uh, l and Motor Monster Replay of the Week. And as we all stare at the flag, maybe we should have another rendition of the uh, National Anthem here, Brandon. Are you, are you a singer? No, I was hoping you would do that. You know, <laughs> I hear the guys that sell paint and also do uh, broadcast on their spare time. <laughs> That's pretty right. funny, actually, because I actually, I did sing in high school. I actually did the national anthem for our football games a couple times, but I'm not singing. So look, the flag's going up. It's bailing me right. out. They heard they heard <laughs> that you were volunteering, and so 
<laughs> they're like, nah, we, uh, we've heard it once, a beautiful rendition, we're not gonna hear it again. <laughs> okay, so start the second half. The Cougars will have the ball. I wanna thank Savage Trucking, who's proud to sponsor v VTV's coverage of live high school basketball. And we are underway with a 14 point deficit. The Eagles looking to cut into that early and back on the court's gonna be Chad Lewis. So be interesting to see how, how he plays out there, how aggressive he plays, staying away from foul trouble. Hey, that first half though, if you like three pointers, we sure had them. Uh, you know, I said that we, I wanted to keep track between Brevin Nilsson and Chad Lewis and both of them had three threes, but hey, Jeremillo had four threes. He said, I wanna be in this too. So that was a pretty cool half at exhibition threes. Jeremillo up with the two and doesn't get it. Yeah, he's been working that baseline all night. He'll make the pass and he'll do a, a complete circuit of the half court. And there's an entry pass to Lamborn that's gonna be knocked out of bounds by the Cougars stay here on this half of the court. Well, it's a, like you say, it was a three party and both, both defenses kind of swarming with those zones, making it hard to get to the rim. Get the entry pass to Lamborn. Back at the Lewis and then Lamborn with nice post position. And when you catch the ball inside the low post like that, you're gonna score or you're gonna get fouled. And he got the score. Yeah, that's a great play. He just, he, he had a step down there. He was right underneath the hoop and ready for it to come. So there's Lamborn on another steal. Man, he's all over the place. Giles with an in between the legs throw. Oh, Lewis, he thought he had that when he short. was backing up like he made it. Must have been straight on, but short. Jaramillo leads all scores with 15. And he gets past his defender. Gets Lewis up in the air. I'm telling you, the difference between Jaramillo last year and this year is just huge. And I just, it's just credit him what he's done on the offseason. I guarantee it. Ooh, and they're gonna call an offensive foul against number 22, Tyler Swain. And I'm not so sure, we'll see here on the LNL Motor Replay. Yeah, there was a little push after the fact and that's what they got him for. So, offensive foul and so there's been a lot of early turnovers by the uh, Cougars early in the second half here. And with only two points, the Eagles haven't made them pay yet, but that's a nice shot by Cade Lamborn. I really like that possession because, I mean, they swung it around the outside, and then I like that how Lamborn got it right by the free throw line. There's so many options that you can do right at the free throw line. You can pass it to both of your posts, kick it back out at three, or take the shot, and that's what he did. And no hesitation on that shot, which next time is going to open up those other passing lanes. So there's a drive to the rack blocked by the Eagles. Coming back the other way, Giles behind the back into the paint. Lewis for three, oh, bam! That was good all the way. And there's a timeout by Coach Garrett to, for the Cougars to talk it over. We're gonna take a short timeout here at VTV6. We'll be right back. At Moon Lake Electric, we are a locally owned cooperative with a deep history of providing dependable and affordable electric service to its customers for over 75 years. With a state-of-the-art electrical system, we are setting a standard for excellence in the electric utility industry. We are proud to call this place home, and we are happy to support our local schools and athletes. Find and like us on Facebook for energy-saving tips. Moon Lake Electric, keeping the power on. Welcome back to VTV6. While the teams are in the timeout, we talked about the importance of Chad Lewis, you know, at, at halftime, and immediately his presence is felt with the Eagles on a 7-0 run. Let's go back to the LNL Motor replay of that three, and it is just, just like you said, Brandon, it was good from the minute his left his hands. Giles swings it out, and in the corner, just high and straight, nothing but net, Chad Lewis immediately changing the tenor of this game, coming back out from the foul trouble in the first half. Yeah, and on the possession before, he got a pass into Cade Lamborn, and so, I mean, he's doing it on the assisting ending, too. Well, and another turnover, and they've got a foul here, and I think they call it on a moving screen. 
Uh, and that foul wipes off a nice drive to the rack by um, Jaramillo, and it was Ty Gilman goes to the bench after that too. So on the mistake, gets his rotation cut short, and Mansfield comes in in his place. You know, sometimes Union, they play so well, and then at times they just get into this lapse where they they don't they take a play off or two, and, and they just don't look like themselves, and it just comes from inexperience. A lot of these guys haven't seen the floor last year, and, and uh, I mean, it, it will come for sure, but that's what's making this comeback back come back because Duchesne's an experienced team, and they're, they know exactly how to come back. Jaramello gets into the lane, and then Jaramello takes some hard contact. And are they going to give that to uh, Lamborn? I believe that's who got the foul. And uh, they do give it to Lamborn. And look, oh boy, it's a hook trip. That's why, that's why Giles went down so hard. Uh, <laughs> Tyler Swain just hooked his foot and tripped him. And Lewis has got to be careful too, because he was inside of that play trying to get the block, but backed up enough where it wasn't a call on him. First points for the Cougars in the second half. 16th point for Jaramillo and has an opportunity to extend that lead. Jaramillo leading all scores on both teams. Here to play tonight here in Union. Giles breaks down the defense and then, oh, boy, I thought that went off a Cougar and then at the last minute, Reaching in with his hand was Jarrett Spencer. I think he should have let that one go. Uh, I really thought Giles had an open layup right there. I think he could have just put that in. He was already far enough in the paint with nobody even looking at him. <laughs> so Billy Hoops for Duchesne is saying, hey, wait a minute, that hit a cougar leg. And uh, I thought that uh, Jarrett Spencer came in and touched it, that that's what they saw. He missed it. But the referees missed the fact that it bounced off a cougar leg on the on the entry pass. So And they did the right thing. They asked all the other two referees and neither one of them could overturn it. So Cougars maintain the ball and boy, the hands are swarming right now. And there's a nice turnover by Jarrett Spencer and he brings the ball up and he's going to get fouled. Boy, and those are the fouls that drive coaches crazy. <laughs> and Chad Lewis right there knocks down a three. Doesn't count, but he's just testing the, you know, testing if he can hit it. It's a heat check. Yeah, Nielsen <laughs> uh, has uh, three fouls, so he takes a seat. We don't have a 20 on the roster for the uh, Cougars. Do you recognize the player? Number 20. Yeah, I don't have that on my roster as well. So there's a foul that's gonna go against unnamed 20. Three in the corner, it's good! And the Eagles continue their hot start to the third period. They've cut the lead down to six, which was, was once 14. Jarrett Spencer knocks down the three. Ooh, and they call a foul on Giles with a nice drive to the rack by Jaramillo, and he'll get two. I'm watching Chad Lewis here up on the top, and he's putting his hands in there, and I think he just needs to be a little bit more careful. I know, I know they're doing really well on defense, but if they lose him for another significant time, um, that could be big, so he just needs to be careful. 18 points on the night for Jaramillo. He's having a nice night from the floor. He's, he's what you call a scoring point guard. I mean, does everything else well. He's floor general, likes to pass the ball around, but man, he sure gets his 18 points, 19 points on the night right now. Moon Lake the, Electric has uh, been providing power to the area since 1938. Find and like them on Facebook. Make sure to tell them thanks for helping VTV6 bring you tonight's game. And there's a nice break there, and Giles, just that pass a little bit slow, but he gets it in. And, oh, wow, what a putback, and I love it. Weston Polson on that putback, what a great play. Didn't even let the ball come down, just kind of took it up in the air.
Jeremy will call him for a screen. He kind of wants it. Good entry pass there. And you'll notice that they've put uh, Chad Lewis on a, I don't want to say a non-threat, but you know, on, on one of the reserve players to kind of take him away from defensive fouls. And then picking up his third foul is Clay Giles. So two Eagles in, in uh, foul trouble here early in the third quarter. And missing the first of two was Chase Burchill. That was a good entry pass to Burchill there. He hits the second one. He misses this it. This is both Mansfield with the big rebound. Mansfield finds a streaking. Oh. And that was a, a hard foul. And that's four team fouls each, and that's just a loose ball foul, so. Yeah, the coaches on the other side wanted a intentional or a hard foul there, but I don't, it was just a, I think it was just a play hard foul. Jermell with a nice cut on the inbounds, and you can't give up points that easy on an inbounds play. Oh, nice pump fake. Oh, what a touch. And you know, right there, he had a big, big body on him, and Lamborn's able to get up in the air after the pump fake, and just with a nice finger roll, gets that to go in. Yeah, some shooters can just like turn around and know who's guarding them, and if they're like a taller guy in front of them, they just put that arc just a little bit higher. That's what I do when I see a guy taller than me. I always put a little bit of arc. And he did that, it was a good touch. Oh, and Chad Lewis with a silly foul. Just a swipe down with 2.01 left here in the third period. And uh, that'll be his fourth foul. And you'll see it right here just mm, right in front of the referee. And it's just a foul that you didn't need to make. And then to add insult to injury is the three on the other side. I believe they only gave him two for that. Oh, nicely done. And a good take to the rack by Weston Polson. Good fake on the entry right there. Pulls it in, puts it in the two. Takes it up with two hands. What a great play. Jeremello long on the three. Spencer with a big rebound there. Let's see what, who they put it into. I would go right back into Lamborn. Lamborn's being big lately with uh, 12 points. Oh, Jarrett Spencer just rockets one out of bounds and then a, a pass that required touch just had too much heat on it. Lamborn couldn't track it down. Yeah, looked to get it into Lamborn. Jarrett Spencer might have had an open three there. But good looking. And Chad Lewis will go to the bench. He's got four fouls. I mean, we're late in the third quarter. They're going to need him big time in the fourth quarter. So, Timeout on the floor. We're going to take a timeout here on VTV6. Founded in 1946 by the Savage family with a single truck, today, Savage is the leader in supply chain management solutions that are tailored to meet the needs of our customers across a variety of industries. We are a proud sponsor of high school sports coverage and the community here in the Uinta Basin. As we take a look inside the Duchesne Eagle huddle and Coach Billy Hoops giving his charges some instruction here at the break between the fourth quarter and the Eagles find themselves in a hole down six with 1.13 left to play here in the third quarter. But it's been a big run. They outscored the uh, Cougars by eight points here in the third period, cutting down a 14-point lead to six. 
But the, uh, of course, the story of the night right now is Lewis's foul trouble. Yeah, Duchesne down 14 at the half. Find a way to claw back in, and it just, it seems like they're making great play after great play, but still find themselves behind by the six to eight points. But it is a big deal that Chad Lewis is out on the bench. Um, you see Cade Lamborn, he'll, he'll, uh, he'll try to pick up the slack while uh, Chad Lewis is on the bench. Jaramello, meanwhile, continues to do what he does. Gets his 22nd point on the night. And we'll go back to our three-point tracker. Chad Lewis with four. Jaramillo with four. And Brevin Nielsen with three. So it's still a close game there. See who can be three-point king of the night. Giles finds a nice opening and up off the glass, taking the contact was Polson, and that's a good no call. Yeah, Weston Polson's done a great job of getting really deep underneath the basket. So it just is just an easy put in. And that's that's his like third shot doing that. But what he does without the ball is even better. I mean he's just he's sealing himself off so that they can't get in front of him. Cougars looking for a hole on this Eagles defense. Jaramillo backs it up, calls for the double screen up top. And you'll see the, the screen and roll, and he gets through the lane. It opens up, and there's a three. It's it no good. Count, no way. Good shot, though. Just a little bit late. Kicks on the zero. So that's the end of three quarters where the Cougars lead the Eagles 44-38. We'll take a break here on VTV6. We'll be back for the fourth quarter. On the current episode of Wild Air, Blake Finn takes us along on its archery deer hunt. Then we follow the DWR as they release some turkeys in the book cliffs. All of this on the latest episode of Wild Air. We're back here at Union High School, start of the fourth quarter. Eagles versus the Cougars, and the Eagles find themselves in a six point deficit. The Cougars trying to recapture some of the magic at the end of the second period and nearly did at the end of the quarter and just barely missed the buzzer beater on the three-pointer. And on the other side, the Eagles are so well coached. Um, even if it's a big deficit, they always seem to try to come back. With their defense, they can always come back. So don't look at that defense to look any different. Brevin Nielsen back in the game. As, as is Chad Lewis. And there's a nice drive to the rack, but Lamborn says, uh uh. Knocks it out of bounds. Cougars maintain possession. Lamborn with a sweet block there. Knew it was going up the whole time. Put it on the dinner table. He ain't getting it. Jeremillo can't find it. Lamborn gets the rebound. Quickly back the other way, the Eagles. We'll see if Union tries to. Draw that foul with a, that fifth foul with Chad Lewis, trying to get it into him. Oh, and they another botched out of bounds call by the referees right in front of the coach of uh, Coach Billy Hoops for the Eagles, and I think his head's going to pop off one of. Yeah, he's not very happy about that call. But I mean, he's invested in his team, and so you you go to. You go to win, and when you get a questionable call like that, it, it, it really irritates you. So Jaramillo up top, finds Gilman. That's a great entry pass to Jaramillo. Jaramillo just doesn't get it quite to go, but a good shot nonetheless. 
Boy, and it's so hard to catch and shoot that reverse. Giles in the lane. Giles hit up the glass. Almost good. Oh, and Ty Gilman's got to be wondering, what do I have to do to get a charge out of this? He took one for the team, but it ends up with a blocking Dr. call. And that puts Dr. Giles on the, on the line for Dr. two. Great move by Giles there. He just slid to the side at the very last second, I think is why he didn't get that charge call. And laid it off the glass, almost got the and one. Giles just short on the free throw. Usually a great free throw shooter. On the shooting end, hasn't been his night, but been working it really well, running the ball and running point. On the second, he makes good. So Clay Giles makes it a five point game. And Jaramillo already asking for the double screen and it's worked so far. He comes up top, he gets through it, trying to find a crease, but the Eagles have figured that play out and that, at least on that possession. A nice crossover dribble, get it in, and then put in by uh, number five, Trevor Burchill. Oh, and the Eagles just with an unnecessary turnover. And there was just no point for it. And you see, uh, Billy Hoops nearly crossed half court with the instruction there. Yeah, that doesn't happen very often with Duchesne making something, some costly turnover like that, careless. Coach lets him know that that's not acceptable. Oh, no, a big play there. Gets the ball, but they didn't pick it off. Inside the Mansfield, working the post, can't get it to go. Lewis fights for it, Giles gets it, Giles across half court. Giles loses the handle, Jaramello picks it up. It's a two on two break. Giles gonna go straight at Lewis. Lamborn with the block and no, oh, they call the foul. Puts Mansfield in line for two. I have to look at the replay on that. I don't know if they got all ball or if he did get a little bit of hand, but that looked like a good play by Lamborn. I don't see anything. Nonetheless, he's gonna get two shots at the line. Mansfield makes good on the first. And Mansfield has the lead at eight, looking to make it nine again. Short on that, but another big offensive rebound, ball loose. Picked up off the floor, and they're going to call a foul. On Mansfield. Mansfield gets the loose ball foul. and I'm not sure I like that call specifically because Duchesne ends up with the ball, and there's a scrum on the floor. Hard to say who's fouling who, because I would say there was probably five fouls down there. Just call it on the biggest guy. <laughs> that's that's a, I think that's the rule. <laughs> good advice, so. Mansfield gets his third and takes a seat on the bench. You get it in the inside the Lamborn. Oh, wide open. Beautiful Lamborn off the shot glass. in the paint. Wow, well done by the Cougar offense. Lead back to six. 14 points for Lamborn on the night. Jeremello continuing to do what he does for the Cougars. There's Brevin Nielsen with the three. It is good. Wow, with that left hand is so smooth. And then he gets the toilet bowl for just a little added flourish. Oh, nicely done. They find Lamborn again. Lamborn gets hit, and then they call it out of bounds, and the Eagles can't buy an out of bounds call on this end of the court. So that's Brevin Nielsen's four three of the night. Chad Lewis four, Jeremillo four. And the team foul count, both teams will be shooting penalty right now on the next foul for the uh, Cougars who sit at six and the Eagles already in the penalty with seven. And the Cougars continue to get inside penetration on the dribble drive. That opens up things and then just cutting in backside is Brevin Nielsen for an easy two and all of a sudden a double digit lead at 11 points for the Cougars. Great seal off right there by Brevin Nielsen too. He was shorter than, than Lamborn, I think that was underneath with him, but he just kind of got his hand 
in the back there. So good play. There's a full timeout on the floor for the Eagles. We're going to take a timeout here for VTV6. It's not about the miles you take when you're driving, but the milestones you see when you get to where you're going. When you graduate high school, buy your first car, get married, start a family, find your first home, and grow old together. Let each mile bring you closer to the moments that matter. l l Motor. People you know. People who care. Welcome back to VTV6, where the Cougars hosting the Eagles. And the Cougars on a little mini run open up a 52-41 lead here with 4.30 left in the, in the quarter. And Hoops says, nope, we've got to talk this out because if we don't catch up right here. And Lewis for three, long. Good looking back rotation on the three there. Just hit the back of the rim. Good shot though. A little deep, but I think he can hit that. Brevin Nielsen with the two. And you know, he has done that three times here in the second half, cutting that backdoor cut after the penetration by one of the guards for the Cougars. And you know, that's something they need to adjust for because he personally is one that's got it back to a 13 point lead. Oh, what do you think about that? That was really close. I think they called it with the body, but man, that was sure block. Guy, it looked like all ball to me. Uh, I don't know. Let's go to the Let's yellow the motor replay. Chase Birchall high in the air on the baseline drive by Jared Spencer. And here he comes, both jumping up. Ooh, got a lot of ball, but he got a lot of arm too. So Chase Birchall always going to be disappointed when it goes against him like that. <laughs> so Jared Spencer makes good on the first. 12 point lead for the Cougars. Short on the second, and Birchall cleans up the garbage. Duchesne brings in a press here. Brevin Nielsen breaks it to number five, Birchall. Almost gets the two, but gets fouled. Up. Said, I'm fine. Let's go shoot two, three throws. ASHE Regional Medical Center making communities healthier. Dr. Burke Young and Dr. Adam Manson providing orthopedic care at ASHE Regional. So Birchall goes to the line and calmly makes the first 13 point lead. If he makes this, they'll match their biggest lead of the night and he does not. So unlucky 13 right now for the Cougars. Giles. Looking for an opening, can't find it. Trapped in the corner, it's gonna be a turnover. That's team defense. A and really good trap in there in the corner. Giles just been struggling, taking care of the ball tonight. Just making unforced turnovers. And I think it's just because of the, the defense that's in his face. I mean, it's not necessarily his fault. Some guy needs to come help him out. Uh, he needs to feel like he's not doing it alone out there. And that's just a frustration foul right there. He's just lost the ball on a trap and he's chasing Jaramello and just gives him a little forearm shiver. There's a good entry pass. Turn it's with Wesley the left Poulsen. hand. You know, Poulsen pay, plays bigger than his 5'11 frame. He's down there posting up. He's got a good spin move. He sure does. He probably is on that uh, Duchesne football team that that's built from toughness. Makes the first. Back to 12. You know, Duchesne, they've won their last six games in a row, you know. And uh, this is something a team, they can build off this loss. If Even if they lose, it's 316 in this, in this game still. They can still get back in it. 
But I mean, this is a big game, 3A against a 1A. It could just only make you better. Yeah, and when we talked to Coach Billy Hoops about that, he says, you know, intentionally schedule the game in the middle of region play, and the reason was he wants to mimic the playoff experience of playing two quality teams in the same week. And uh, he's certainly got his wish here tonight, and Lamborn just strips it away. Yeah, they're definitely just holding their own on defense especially. They just can get in the heads of any opponent they have. And Lamborn with the shot, gets fouled. He's going to go to the line. So now double bonus for the Cougars. Well, the, the Eagles will be shooting two for the rest of the night with 10 team fouls for the Cougars and Lamborn for a chance to cut it to single digits. Yeah, Duchesne has a, a game coming up with Rich next. They're second in the conference. And so this is this is good, uh, a game to get ready for that. And then they'll actually be back in Duchesne with uh, uh, Tabiona again. Um, and Duchesne got the win against Tabiona, 37 to 31 in a defensive juggernaut battle. I mean, and so Duchesne's great team. They'll, they'll even get better with this with this experience out here with these guys. Timeout on the floor for the Cougars. We're gonna take a timeout here at VTV6. We'll be back for the conclusion of tonight's game. Founded in 1946 by the Savage family with a single truck, today Savage is the leader in supply chain management solutions that are tailored to meet the needs of our customers across a variety of industries. We are a proud sponsor of high school sports coverage and the community here in the Uinta Basin. Welcome back to VTV6 as we look in the huddles for the Eagles and right now the Cougars with just over three minutes just under three minutes left in the game. And when you have a 10 point advantage in a no shot clock prep game, it makes it pretty easy as long as you don't have turnovers. And that's what the Eagles are hoping to do when they come out with the full court press. So they're gonna trap in the corners. Jaramello wisely plays it backwards. And then the ball knocked out of bounds by Giles. Sometimes when you beat the press, you beat it, and then you rush a shot. You know, and, and that's exactly what the press wants you to do. Is it wants you to get in a hurry. But uh, right now the Cougars patiently looking for a shot, and then a swipe down. They're going to give that foul to who'd they give that to? Number 25 for the Eagles. That's Corbin Young. And Corbin takes a quick seat. So ninth team foul for the Eagles. And Nielsen to shoot. He misses, so a good foul for the Eagles in this case. That's all you want to do is just make another possession so that you can closer. Single digits is what you're trying to get to. Jarrett Spencer with a two. Oh. Big time play there. Polson comes out of nowhere. I didn't even see him out of the out of my sight line and nearly gets the the and one. That's his second attempted tip in. The first one actually went in. But yeah, you're definitely right, Mark. He he plays bigger than he than he is out there and just even, shows in that. Yeah, even on the L and L motor <laughs> replay, he comes out of nowhere. Maybe just a little bit content thinking he uh rebound. And Polson Eagles within nine. And you know, Jeremella doesn't get a lot of rest. And you see his torrid start. He, he's kind of tapered off a little here, has 23 points. I mean, you can't say anything bad about a 23 point <laughs> night, but it came earlier in the game. And maybe his lack of rest is having an impact on his game right now. 
Oh, and there's a foul, and that's going to be on Lamborn. And a good show of class goes over and, you know, says, hey, Trevor, I didn't really mean to hit you that hard. <laughs> yeah, Union and they've str they've struggled a little bit this year. And again, it's been from the inexperience, but they're one and one in, in region play. And so they can really get back into this and they can use a game like this to really, I've, I've seen different things in this game than I have in previous games, especially on the defensive side where they've been locked in the one, three, one, like the entire game, no press. And you've seen them change that up and go into the press, go into different defenses. And I think that's been big tonight. Yeah, and Birchall makes both. Extends the lead back to 10. Just got under two minutes here. And Jaramello on Giles gets it to oh, they're inside. And they, somebody got to shoot. Oh, just short. And then Lamborn with the Lamborn rebound. Lamborn with a big rebound. He's tough. He's strong in there. And he's going to go to the line. You good. see the Eagles passing up several good looks, you know, and then they get the ball to Chad Lewis. And of course, you want him shooting that three, but uh, somebody's got to be willing to shoot. And Lewis finally pulled the trigger. For sure. And, he, you know, it might be to the test. Like, he's been on the bench a lot this game, and so the rhythm there is just not there. Um, so sometimes with your shooters, if you're on the bench a lot and you're not in the game and you're feel, not feeling the ball, sometimes they just don't go in for you. Brings that one in. Strata Networks bringing you the latest mobile devices from your favorite brands. Visit them today and buy one, get one on select smartphones. Strata, Strata Networks, we connect lives. They call it travel. Jeremella gets in the lane and just that extra half a step and gets the travel call, actually called by the Duchesne bench. <laughs> I think you're right on that, Mark, that he, he's getting a little bit winded out there. It's pretty late in the game. He hasn't had a lot of rest. Giles with a good fake That one's step. off, going to be an air ball. Oh, boy, that's the shot you want. You get a wide open corner three, and then it's just badly shanked. The shankopotamus from the corner. <laughs> Good play by Birchall there. He just takes it in all the way from the three-point line by himself. No one there lays it in. Well, the trap came up, and, you know, they had him trapped trying to go back up top. So he says, oh, you're going to trap me up top. I'll go baseline <laughs> on you. And he's, had, he's made a living on that tonight, and that's his seventh point of the evening. Giles banks in the <laughs> three. How about that? For a second three of the year, <laughs> banks it in. Hey, we'll take it any way we can get it. 30 second timeout on the floor. LNL Motor wants to remind you it's the love of the game, the players, the competition, and the diehard fans that matter the most. Let each mile you drive in your LNL vehicle take you to the moments that matter most in your life. Single digit game, Mark. Seven point lead for the Cougars, and you said it at the break, is it just feels closer than 10 points. And you know, the Eagles just keep hanging around, and right now, it's the test of 59 seconds. Can the Cougars hold on here? And it's one of those things where I think the clock favor favors the Cougars on their home court tonight. For sure, but you see the Eagles, they're just clawing and scratching for the ball. Um, like an eagle does. I mean, they're just there getting every rebound, anything that's there, getting shots to go up, getting fouled, playing defense. Here's the full court trap press here. Oh, nearly losing the ball, and the Eagles thought they had a, and then they get a foul. So who did they foul is the question. Shooting two, and I think they're going to put Brevin Nielsen on the line. Yeah, they swiped him as they went by on that. Brevin Nielsen will go to the line. So multiple players for the Eagles in serious foul trouble. And with the left hand short, so that's a win if you're the team fouling. You're trying to hope to trade, you know, one point or, or, or no points for twos or threes on the other end. But with 44 seconds left, 
Eagles on their last gasp. And that's a clutch uh, three-pointer by Brevin Nielsen. Yeah, Niel Nielsen nails that one. Out to Lewis. And Giles to the rack, swings Good it pass. out. And it's gonna be missed oh. again. Same result from the corner. And that's a good that's a good pass. That's the one you want. Jared Spencer has been big on threes all year. Would have been his 15th three of the year, but just didn't get it. Just fell off the side of the rim. Eight point game. So the uh, referees waving for the substitutions to come in early, which is interesting. Usually they come in on the second, but. Uh, so Jaramillo icing the game at the line, 30.9 seconds left, nine point lead. And he makes both, and that young man has had a big night. That makes it 25 points for him on the night. And then the yeah, 25 points on the night for Jaramillo. Um, how far he's came from last year. Just a big player for this team. Again, floor general, scoring point guard. Can get it done all uh, on the defensive end as well. And a chance for two more. So he could have 27 here if he makes both. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that's his game high this year. And career high. No, oh, missed that Oh, he one. missed that one, so he's got 26 on the night. Jared Spencer with the follow put back, doesn't quite go. Brevin Nielsen, eight seconds to so probably just take it across the court and dribble this out with Union getting the win here. Oh, and they call a travel, so we're gonna get Duchesne back the ball with two seconds. That was a good defensive play by uh, Chad Lewis. And then I, I like to see that because, you know, they're not giving up. You know, they're not gonna just go back to the huddle. They're gonna play defense until the very end, until the final tick goes. Great play there by Chad Lewis. Three point goes by the Giles. Doesn't quite get in the hoop. And that's your score, 63-52 Union tonight. Winning a big game, in a rivalry game against Duchesne. Last year lost this game here at home. Wanted to change that, did it. Uh, we had some big time scoring from Jaramillo. Big time scoring from the other end of Cade Lamborn and, and uh, Chad Lewis as well. And just, just an all out really good game tonight. I, I had fun watching it. Had call, fun calling it with Mark Mason here. Well, let's take a look at the l l Motor replays of today's game. And we're gonna go back to the first half. And you know, it was a three party early and Jaramillo got a hot start from the outside, just raining threes. And you know, Chad Lewis had something to say about that, Brandon. Boom, he's gonna get some of his own. And then Lamborn with the alley-oop on the inbounds pass. And they just continued. To and it was outside uh, all evening for the first half and then L Lamborn doing his work in the post. And boy, that was a tough angle for Giles. Somehow kisses it off the glass and in. And to end the half with the big three, Jaramillo, and he's the player of the game. You know, the Cougars win because of his effort tonight. Had 25 points. And Lamborn trying to keep him in there. Chad Lewis from the corner, one of his many threes. And the threes continue to go down. And there's that charging in, tip in from Weston Polson. He had a, a few of those tonight. And round and round, and in it finally goes, and that's Brevin Nielsen for three. And the Cougars, even the, the, grudge, the grudge match, won one in the last two years. It was, uh, it was raining threes out there. That was a pretty fun game to watch. Also, I was keeping track of Brevin Nilsson, Chad Lewis, and uh, Jaramello jumped in there. They all got four threes tonight, so no one takes the king spot, take a tie, so, but really like their F point line. So that's it here for VTV6 in a 
Basin matchup between the Duchesne Eagles and the Union Cougars, and the Cougars come out victorious. Everyone have a great night.